Anderson Talishka. It feels like that's a name that we've been hearing throughout every transfer window ever since he departed Bishtesh back in 2018. When Talishka first arrived, he immediately announced his arrival by scoring a fantastic free kick goal on his debut against his parent club, Benfica. Alongside the likes of Ricardo Quaresma, Vincent Abubakar, and Ryan Babel, he led Besiktas to a second consecutive title in 2017. The following season, he started off by holding up the club for a little bit more money, despite the fact that he was just on loan. That caused him to start the season slow. He wasn't fit when he came back. He came back from Brazil, he was a little overweight, he wasn't immediately fit, Chanel Gunesh didn't put him in the team straight away, and he didn't play a lot. He only scored three goals in the first half of the season in the Turkish Super League. Beşiktaş only got 30 points after 17 games. That isn't a lot for a defending champion. However, in the Champions League, Beşiktaş performed incredibly, historically. Beşiktaş finished top of their group by winning every away game, remaining unbeaten. To this day, they are still the only Turkish club to ever have accomplished that feat. The only Turkish club to ever win their Champions League group, the only Turkish club to ever win all three of their away games, and the only Turkish club to ever remain unbeaten in the Champions League group stages. And they will remain so forever, because of course, as you know, the Champions League is changing formats. In that Champions League campaign, Talishka played a pivotal role. He scored important goals away against Leipzig, at home against Porto. He was an important player. And not only in the Champions League, but also in the Europa League the season prior, he scored important goals. The most memorable of his goals are probably those against Lyon in the quarterfinals of the Europa League, where Besiktas unfortunately went out on penalties. Those are all historic moments, fond memories Besiktas fans have for Anderson Talishka. It is therefore no surprise that Besiktas fans are still clamoring to see him back at the club six years later. But is it right for Besiktas and Besiktas fans to expect a return from Anderson Talishka at the age of 30? He was born in 1994 and it's 2024 now. He's 30 years old, six years on from when he first arrived at the Black Eagles, when he was just 24 years old. Besiktas are now in a different stage in their development as a club. They have other players in that position, Ernest Mucci, Rafa Silva, other players who play in Talishka's favorite role, that behind the striker. And for the first time since Anderson Talishka, Besiktas now have a talent behind the striker that perhaps even outshines that of Anderson Talishka in Rafa Silva. And still I see people clamoring for Talishka's return, even now, to this day. I see people daily on Twitter coming up with transfer concoctions to justify bringing back Anderson Talishka. And I think to myself, why? Anderson Talishka was a fantastic player for Besiktas, no doubt. But does he really have a place in this team. I can't see it. I've asked my friends, I've asked them, is there anyone of you who is adamant about wanting to see Talishka back at Besiktas? And of course, I think if you're emotional about it and you look back and you put on your rose-tinted glasses and you think about Talishka's time at Besiktas, it's easy to fall into that trap of nostalgia of wanting those incredible moments back, incredible moments that Talishka was part of, but also Ricardo Quaresma, Ryan Babel, Atiba Hutchinson, Ozan Uziakub. I've had arguments this window with fans that who want Ozan Uziakub back? And my argument with them was, I'm sorry, this is not the same Ozan as six years ago. And the same could be said, potentially, about Anderson Talishka. Ever since leaving Besiktas, he has been playing at a level that is at most questionable. First he went to China, 
and the Chinese Super League. There was a little bit of a craze for a while there with a lot of money being spent. And Anderson Tadishka was one of the guys, one of the many players, especially Brazilians, that went over and secured the bag of money that the Chinese were willing to offer. And now for the past couple of years, Anderson Talishka has been active in the Saudi Pro League, playing for Al Nasser, the club of Cristiano Ronaldo. So he's a teammate of one of the best of all time. But with the rise of the Saudi Pro League in recent years, there have also come more ambitious moves by the Saudis. They want to surround Cristiano Ronaldo with bigger names, not necessarily better players, because Talishka has been extremely successful in Saudi. He has scored a plethora of goals, just like he did at Besiktas. They want to replace him, or at least rumors have been that they wanted to replace him with bigger names, uh, more attractive names to lure eyes on the Saudi Pro League, as they have been doing for the past two years, trying to get interest in their football. And Anderson Talishka, despite the fact that he was a wonderful player for us, is not necessarily somebody that the average European football watcher uh, will pay money for to see. That is just an unfortunate truth. But, but let's forget about that for a moment and look at how good is Anderson Talishka still. I think it's very difficult to say he is still the player he was six years ago without putting him in a situation where he has to compete at a level where he competed at six years ago. The Champions League, the Europa League, and of course the Super League. Saudi Pro League is a league that is definitely growing, that is definitely improving. But how good is it really? It's hard to tell, right? There's quite a few former Besiktas players who play in Saudi, including Josh Kevin Nkudu and Bernard Mensah. And those players are doing quite well. And that is something that raises some eyebrows. When you see Bernard Mensah last season on the relegation candidate scoring 14 goals and you see Josh Kevin and Kudu scoring 15 goals, you wonder, how good is this league? And then when you go and take a little bit of a closer look and you see the types of goals these guys are scoring, you realize that the Saudi Pro League has a lot of big names and a lot of stars, but they also have a lot of players that are probably, at best, Ikinji League level. Maybe Birinji League on a good day. And I don't think that's the type of level that is going to challenge somebody like Anderson Talishka. I don't think the Chinese Super League is the type of level that is going to challenge someone like Anderson Talishka. He was at a pivotal moment in his development when he left Besiktas. He was close to a move to Manchester United, according to rumors. But instead of going to the Premier League, he went to China. Six years on from that move, and now he is 30, and he hasn't played at a high level in over five years. So how good is Anderson Talishka really? How much money is Anderson Talishka making? He's making seven to eight million a year. So if you're talking about bringing back Anderson Talishka, you're talking about a very expensive player. Not only will you have to pay a transfer fee to Al Nasser, but also you will have to pay a very steep wage. Right now, Besiktas's top played players are Rafa Silva and Chiro Immobile, who are both making 6 million a year, which is by far a record for Besiktas, who before this had never paid a player more than 4.2 million in guaranteed wages. So that's a big jump up from the wages that Alvaro Negredo and Pepe were making in 2017 and 18. Not only that, of course, you already have two players that are making a lot of money. And if you were to bring in Anderson Talishka, you would have a third one. And the problem is with Chiro Immobile and with Rafa Silva, they're coming from leagues like the Portuguese and the Italian league that are at a very high level that are really a higher level than our own Turkish Super League. But Anderson Talishka, again, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, but he's just coming from the, the Saudi Pro League. And even if you had the money, where would you play him? That is my big question. We now have Rafa Silva, and I think he is probably the best player I have seen playing for Besiktas in at least the last six or seven years. I 
can't really think of a player that is better than him, other than perhaps Ricardo Quaresma. Some of you will argue Anderson Talishka. I don't think so. There's a reason why in 2017 we got to loan Anderson Talishka. Because Benfica had somebody named Rafa Silva, who they thought was better. And if you look at the track record of both players, you could definitely make a case for both of them. But I think in the long run, and seeing how good Rafa is right now, I have no doubt in my mind that Benfica made the right choice by going with Rafa Silva in 2016-17. And I think the same could be said now for Besiktas. If we had the choice, Rafa Silva or Anderson Talishka, I would pick Rafa Silva any day of the week. Now, of course, you could force out Rafa Silva to the left, you could force him to the right, and you could put Anderson Talishka behind the striker. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying you can't make it work. However, you have a player named Simi Kilisoy, for example, who is 19 years old and developing and a massive talent, somebody that can really put the Besiktas Academy on the map in the coming years by making a splash in Europe. That is not somebody you want to hinder his development by bringing in a 30-year-old Anderson Talishka to potentially play on one of his potential spots by forcing Rafa Silva out to the left, you would force Simi on the bench or you would force him to the right. But I think we what we all know, Simi has been performing best on the left wing. So then the other option is you move Rafa to the right side and you put Talishka behind the striker still. And yeah, sure, that can work. There's nobody really there that whose development you would be seriously hindering. I don't think a 27-year-old Milo Rasicka's development is going to be halted a lot. I don't think we have high hopes for Rasicka to become much better than he is today. We have Joao Mario who can play on that right wing as well, but he is a similar age to Talishka, so you're not really hindering him either. So sure, it could work, but is it worth it? Is it worth the headache? Is it worth all of that? On top of that, do we play the type of football right now that suits Anderson Talishka? If you remember in 2016-17 and 2017-18, the two seasons that Anderson Talishka played for us, we didn't exactly play the same brand of football we're playing right now. Giovanni van Bronckhorst has really put his mark on the team already in only a couple of games. And you can really see the hand of the coach in this side. I think we play a high pressing game, we play combination football, we like to play short passes. And I think that's very different to the football or the brand of football that Shinal Gunnar had us playing back in 2016 and 2018. Yes, sure, in 2015-16, I definitely think that Shinal Gunnar had us playing good combination football, but certainly when Jose Sosa left and Anderson Talishka came in, our brand of football kind of shifted. We became more a team that focused on playing over the wings, crossing the ball into the penalty area. And Anderson Tolishka definitely reaped the rewards of that. How many goals did he score on an assist from Ricardo Quaresma? But do we have the players to facilitate that right now? We don't really have true out-and-out -out wingers in the classical sense of it. Both Simi and Rafa are more guys that play as a second striker almost. Milot Rasicka, sure, he's a real winger, but he doesn't have exactly the best crossing game. And Joao Mario, we still have to wait and see. We have to see how that turns out, whether or not he is that type of player that can put in that pinpoint cross. But I don't think that we really have the type of football and the players to accommodate Anderson Talishka perfectly. Therefore, I would really say... I don't think it is a good idea to bring him back. I think Anderson Talishka is a fantastic player. Some may even call him a legend for the two seasons he spent in the club, and there's certainly a case to be made for that. And I think that he was amazing in those two seasons, and I would have definitely liked to see him back at the club in the last couple of years. But at this point, when we finally have somebody, a true successor, perhaps to Talishka, perhaps to Sosa, Maybe 
not even a successor, but his own brand of number 10 in Rafa Silva, I just can't see room for somebody like Anderson Talishka. Let me know what you think. Would you like to see Anderson Talishka back at Besiktas? How would you make it work? How would you fit him into the team? Or do you agree with me? Do you think that there isn't a place for him? Let me know in the comments below. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and click that notification bell. Thank you for listening.